are you? Welcome to LSB Feaster's radio channel and travel corner, where we keep great radio from the past alive. And today we're going to St. Louis and Oldies 103 KLOU in St. Louis. Now, back in the 80s and 90s, it seems like every radio market had either breakfast with the Beatles or a Beatles brunch on the weekend and this air check is one from KLOU in St. Louis normally hosted by Kevin McCarthy but on this air check it's hosted by Mike McCann now Mike spent decades on the radio in New York spending time at WYNY WCBS FM WINS and today he's sports anchor at WFAN now what makes this air check unique is Mike McCann's special guest, the one and only Ron Lundy, who spent decades in New York at WABC and WCBS-FM. He was on air in New York from 1965 until his retirement from CBS-FM in 1997. Now, before going to New York, Lundy was a popular jock at WIL in St. Louis. And in this air check, Lundy talks about his experience with the Beatles when he was working at WIL. A big thanks to Mike McCann for this air check. So appreciate it. If you like what you hear, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you're ready, let's go back to September 18th, 1994. Mike McCann and Breakfast with the Beatles on Oldies 103, KLOU, St. Louis. KLOU, St. Louis's Oldies Authority. Gentlemen, the Beatles! And now, Good Time Oldies Clue 103 presents Breakfast with the Beatles. Oh, yeah! I... Full hour of the songs and stories behind the biggest band of the 60s, the Beatles. You can't do that and twist and shout get us rolling this morning on Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles, sponsored by Rothman Furniture. I'm Mike McCann for Kevin McCarthy with another full hour of songs and stories about the greatest group of the 60s. From our Beatles timeline exactly 30 years ago yesterday marked the Beatles' first concert appearance here in the Show Me State. And my special guest this morning who will be joining us is a man who not only was at the Beatles' Kansas City concert, but brought more than a couple of dozen of his St. Louis friends along. Clue 103. On Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles, I'm speaking with a man who is one of your direct connections to the Beatles music right here in St. Louis in 1964, the year they arrived in America. In fact, uh, when I think of this gentleman, he held the same slot on the legendary rock and roll station of the 60s that I hold now, and that's the afternoon show. And I'm talking about the wild child. Welcome, Ron Lundy, to Clue 103. Well, hello, Mike. How you doing? How's all my friends in St. Louis? We are fine, and we are so excited about the fact that 30 years ago, this weekend, the Beatles made their first Missouri appearance. Now, just before we got on the air, you mentioned we almost got them here in St. Louis. Yeah. As it turned out, the first time the Beatles played our state, first time the Beatles played the Show Me State, was September 64 in Kansas City, and you, my friend, were, uh, I guess you'd say, the host of a whole bunch of St. Louisans who went and saw the Beatles in person. Thirty young ladies, uh, teenage young ladies, uh, won a contest, and uh, we flew them to uh, Kansas City. And uh, you remember George Michael? Sure do. Well, George was with me. And uh, the uh, airline ladies, the pilots, and all of us sort of chaperoned. And of course, you wouldn't do that today, but this was in 1964. And it was just, I have never seen anything like it to this day. I have never seen anything like, uh, like the kids in the audience. And, you know, everybody, you know, you see the pictures of the Beatles and all the young ladies are, you know, crying and just having just, just little fits in the audience. Well, I'm going to tell you, it was some guys that I saw there that was really getting with it, too. And it was so good. The only problem was, Mike, you couldn't hear them that well because of the crowd. It was at the old ballpark in Kansas City. 
and uh, the uh, the sound wasn't that great. But you saw them, you knew what they were singing without really hearing it all that well. And I have just never experienced anything like that to this day, and that was 30 years ago. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Tomorrow I'll miss you Another day let me back up a few weeks before the concert when yeah. you and the folks at the radio station put the contest together. Can you recall the amount of entries you had, the amount of Beatle fans in St. Louis that wanted to go and fly with you over to Kansas City? It must have been 20,000, 30,000 then. And uh, the contest, we only ran it for about 10 days. And uh, the mail was still coming in from St. Louis, you know, all around the area. And it must have been twenty or 30,000. That was a lot of mail in about 10 days for St. Louis. One, two, three, five! Things we said today, back to back with us, saw her standing there on Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles. I'm Mike McCann. We're talking with Ron Lundy, who was part of the St. Louis contingent to the Beatles' Kansas City concert 30 years ago this week. And, Ron, you were just talking about the, the level of excitement of the crowd. Never forget Can it. Never saw anything like it. Never seen anything like it since at any concert or anything. Now, I never saw Elvis. They say it was the same thing with Elvis, uh, especially before Elvis went in the Army in the 50s. But I never saw Elvis. But uh, the Beatles, I have just never seen anything like it. Incidentally, uh, we were the first uh, in St. Louis. I'm not sure if we were the first in, 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 in the country or not. But I know St. Louis was right at the top of being the first to ever play a Beatles song. Did, I remember that. Did it have something to do with the fact that George Harrison's sister at the time was living over in uh, Illinois? Absolutely. But but the thing about it, see, we didn't know that, of course, then. But the music came out, and Mike, I know you don't remember, but the Beatles were on so many different labels. And uh, with those songs they had, the, uh, the Please Please Me, I could go on, you know, all day, do you want to know a secret, all the big, uh, the real good... Beetle bubblegum, as I used to call it. You know, it was, it was just so good. It was just such good music that all my love and all that stuff, so you start hitting on Capitol, I want to hold your hand. But before that, they were on so many different labels, and we had them in, and we were listening to it. The first song that I remember that we ever played, I believe Bob Osborne played it. I believe Bob Osborne played it on the air. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was, uh, it was Please Please Me. I believe it was the first Beatles song that was ever played there. Please Please Me, which, as our guest Ron Lundy reminded, was the first Beatles song ever played on St. Louis radio. And we'll have more with our special guest coming up as Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles continues. Next in line, though, it's this morning's Listener's Choice Triple Play. It's one mattress event that'll put you to sleep. Shoebox cards from Hallmark. And now, back to Breakfast with the Beatles. Clue Welcome back to Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles. And this morning's Listener's Choice Triple Play looks at a later period set of Beatles songs. They were sent to us by Michael Tosto in St. Peter's. Reaching back to Sergeant Pepper for a day in the life. While my guitar gently weeps, and I am the walrus. Listener's Choice Triple Play, submitted to Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles by Michael Tosto of St. Peter's. Just one, Michael, a Clue 103 t-shirt. We've got lots more in the back room, and one of them has your name on it, but only if you send us your list of your three all-time Beatle favorites. Our address, KLOU Radio, 7th Floor, Number 1 Memorial Drive, St. Louis 63102. And in this space of Breakfast with the Beatles next Sunday morning, we we would love to be spinning the songs that you asked for. As Breakfast with the Beatles continues, it's back to that Beatlemania year of 1964. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true? 
If I Fell from the first Beatles movie, A Hard Day's Night. This week in 1964, though, attention wasn't just focused on the big screen, but ballpark in Kansas City. And we'll talk more about the Beatles' first Missouri concert with special guest Ron Lundy as Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles continues. Rocky Farlow made my morning. You know song that is? It's a Mizzou theme. Didn't get to hear that often on Saturday. I'll play that after touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Start playing it after first down. <laughs> yeah. We won the toss. <laughs> and they kick into the theme. <laughs> That's so cynical and sarcastic, but golly, you come out losing like that, you just kind of have to play the fight song and tell jokes. Yes. The Rocky Marlowe Show, weekdays, 5.30 to 9. Rocky makes my morning. Clue If you're looking for mystery, look no further than the explosive two-hour premiere of... Under Suspicion. Tonight on CBS. And now, back to Breakfast with the Beatles. Clue Thanks for listening to the special edition of Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles. I'm Mike McCann. Ron Lundy was lucky enough to be part of a more than two dozen strong delegation of St. Louisans that saw the Beatles' first concert in our state actually 30 years ago yesterday. Uh, Ron, you heard him, but did you get a chance to meet him? Did you get a chance to interview the Beatles? Well, I talked to him out there. Mm -hmm. I talked to him out there. I talked, uh, well, see, they had the Beatle plane, you know, that they were in on. And uh, I couldn't get any of the young ladies there. I was going to try to get some of them up there. But they couldn't with the Beatle entourage and all that. You know, it was just, it was just too many people around him. But I got on. I talked to him. It was the first time that I'd met him. Of course, I've met him many times since then here, you know. But uh, it was the first time that I'd, uh, I'd ever met him. And I remember they were just a real nice bunch of kids. And they were kids. And I saw him, uh, I saw, uh, I saw Ringo a couple of three years ago for some party down here. He was doing a uh, show on, uh, PBS. And we were talking about it and he said that he remembered all that. He said he was so fast that he said it was all like a dream. As a matter of fact, the whole Beatles career was like a dream. And of course, I knew John Lennon real well. He just lived about three blocks from me here in New York. And, uh, Paul McCartney and George Harrison, you know, we met all the guys and it just, uh, it doesn't seem like 30 years, I, I promise you. It seems like, you know, 10 years or something. You're listening to Breakfast with the Beatles on Good Time Oldies, Clue 103. And Bobby Love. Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles. Ron, can you think of any of the songs specifically the Beatles sang at that Kansas City show? Can't Buy Me Love. Uh, she Loves You. I Want to Hold Your Hand. I Saw You Standing There. All My Loving. Uh, please, Please Me. <laughs> you know, you can call it all. Like it you was, want to know a secret? Like it was yesterday. Yes. Well, thanks for reminiscing with us, Ron. It's a delight to... Uh, draw again upon your uh, St. Louis connection, and you've still got a lot of folks that fondly remember you. From well, your bless their years. hearts. Uh, Mike, let me tell you something. St. Louis, without a doubt, was my career. Getting here was just a matter of time now that I look back on it. St. Louis was my career. It, 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 it was a step for me to take. And to me, St. Louis is the greatest city in the world. Even today, man, I'm always talking to people from St. Louis and around St. Louis, and I'll never forget St. Louis. It was good to me, and by golly, I love everybody there. Well, we want you to come out and visit with us. I'll tell you what, uh, we hear there are some very tentative plans, but I got a hunch they're going to come off for a 30th anniversary Beatle convention here in our town in yeah. what will be August of 1996 to mark the three-decade anniversary of the one and only time the Beatles played Bush Stadium, which unfortunately for you was a bit after you'd moved on to New York, but that was our singular great Beatle event at, uh, at the new Bush Stadium. And uh, I know that there are plans already in progress to put a Beatle convention together. They just 
in fact, had one yesterday in Kansas City to mark this uh, anniversary weekend for folks on the other side of the state. And uh, we're going to have one here in two years. And we would love you to come here and come back to your old hometown and uh, restoke the memories with us in 96. Well, what a nice thing to say. And I really appreciate it, Mike. And listen, you take care of yourself. And uh, you tell all the folks out there that I, well, let me tell them. Hello, St. Louis. I love you. Back in 1931, people worked hard six days a week. Get yourself some Malcolm Seltzer and you feel better fast. Only as directed. Good times, great oldies. Blue 103. No more perfect song than that to top off this special edition of Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles. The song, in fact, the Beatles added for that one and only time to their concert itinerary like they played Kansas City. I'm Mike McCann. Special thanks again to our friend Ron Lundy from WCBS FM Radio in New York, the oldie station in America's number one city. And that's where Ron's been hiding ever since he gave up the handle of being the wild child. I'm Mike McCann in for Kevin. He'll be back next Sunday morning with another hour of Clue 103's Breakfast with the Beatles, sponsored by Rothman Furniture. Keep in mind, our listener's choice triple play can be yours. Write us. KLOU, 7th floor, number one Memorial Drive, St. Louis 6th 3102. Now our superstar Sunday morning continues. Stand by. Jay Gordon is up next, and he's got a full hour of Elvis only. And from Clue, from Lou, till next time, cheerio. A L O U, St. Louis's oldies authority.